Fifty is asking, in the United States, Homer Plessy was recently pardoned 130 years after the case he brought to the Supreme Court, uh, which ushered in the separate but equal era of Jim Crow. Is it ever too late to right a wrong? And what would you say to those who doubt the sincerity? Do you want to actually tell people who this person is? So um, in... Uh, Homer Plessy was a black man who refused to leave like a whites only train of a, 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 a um, car, a car on a train, section on a train. And he was part of his um, civil disobedience. And then um, it's been like a long time since I took American history. But basically that was fought all the way up to the Supreme Court. And that became the standard in which they said, okay, like, it, it it legalized segregation. That was my understanding. And um, so does that explain things well enough? Basically like Rosa Park, but instead of a bus, you have a train. Yeah, it was several years, like decades before then too. Decades before that. All right. So he's like, he was like, he was doing it so much earlier. That's like really brave because as as brave as Rosa Park was, this person was doing it at the time that it was like even less acceptable for black people to be in white. Yeah, no, area. like let's talk about how much earlier. 1892. Wow. 1892. This Plessy, man who was mixed old. race, was recruited by a local civil rights organization to deliberately break Louisiana's separate car act, which segregated train passengers. He purchased a first-class train ticket, sat in the whites-only car bound for the city of Covington, told the conductor he was colored, and then refused to move. After Plessy, a shoemaker and activist, was apprehended, his attorney challenged the state's racist law on the grounds that it violated the 14th Amendment, which guaranteed citizens equal protection under the law. This and man had balls. It, it, and it, that, that, it, was, it went up to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court ruled against him. Yeah, okay, so that's the thing. The Supreme Court was like, so he's like, this is unconstitutional for me to be separated, like like I get to be able in the, to be in the white area or whatever they called it. And so it went to the Supreme Court. Um, and the Supreme Court like, no, this is not unconstitutional. It is acceptable. And then it made it law, because the Supreme Court like made that decision that made segregation officially, you know, the law of the land, right? Like, you know, it was recognized by the Supreme Court as something legitimate until yeah, much, much saying, later. Because they're saying, well, the 14th Amendment guarantees like equal representation and treatment under the law. Right. Hmm. So they're saying, oh, OK, well, as long as the accommodations you receive are equal, then the separation of who's receiving those um, services or accommodations shouldn't be seen as unconstitutional. Which in practice, hmm. that was never the case. The services, mm -hmm. the accommodations were never equal, even though they were separate, and it was trying to be it was trying to be justified. But, this yeah, way. but it, but now it's on even if it's equal, now it's unconstitutional to make it separate, even if it's equal. So oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so so now they they pardoned him one hundred and thirty years later. He died knowing that his activism, I mean, didn't like it's so sad that he didn't see the result of. Like he, he, I don't know if he died thinking that this will always be the same. Like he this, died in 1925 it? before he could see the separate but unequal doctrine overturned oh. in Brown versus Board of Education in 1954. So he never knew, he died not ever knowing if this is ever going to be fixed. No. So, okay, well, we actually have to address the question. Um, <laughs> is it now ever that too late everyone to has write... the background? Yeah. Is it ever too late to write a wrong? No, obviously not. It's never too early. Actually, it should be the other way around. It's never too early to write it wrong, right? Wait, no, it's never too late. No, it's always too early. Never mind. What are you saying? It's never. Yeah, okay. Never <laughs> mind. It, no, it's never too late to write it wrong. Wait, I mean, as always, is, don't they say it's better late than never? Like, yeah, better late than never. Yeah. Okay, so there you go. Um, <laughs> sorry, I, was, I confused myself. What would you say to those who <laughs> doubt the sincerity? What do you mean? Like, I mean, why would they not be sincere? I mean, 
do you, do you think they would just say oh are... it's political pandering now you just want to make it seem like you're a champion for minority groups now so people are more inclined like that kind of thing i mean so we can't with that kind of thinking we can't celebrate anything do you know what i mean we can't like any form of celebrating progress then would be would be useless like we want to i mean yes this is symbolic but we do need symbolism right we do need to make us you know make send a me sometimes you do things to send a message to mark how much things have changed i mean imagine if you didn't imagine if you had the opportunity to pardon this man and didn't that would also send a message <laughs> like wow this guy just like we don't like he did something and now even after 130 years after making this much progress we're not even recognizing his activism like you you know bringing up people's memories and the activism that they did these are really good ways of trying to cherish good people and and people who try to face you know against you know face evil against all odds of success you know what i mean that's how you recognizing that and reminding people about that and using symbolism things that are you know it might be a pr stunt but it's a good pr stunt right because you want people to remember where we were how we got here and also encourage people to keep fighting evil against all odds you know to 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 you know, like a lot of people didn't. Oh, here's another thing. How many people know Homer Pel Pel Plessy? I didn't know him. I had to look this up, right? Now I know. You study so, it in American history if you take it in high school in, know, here in like, America. Okay, okay. But like non-Americans don't know. Now it's on the news. All right. And now people are like, oh, this was nice. More people know about him, right? Also, you know, I don't know. I think like celebrating people who, who did this, it's an inc encourages people. Then maybe you know what maybe if you're doing activism here's a here's a here's what it will take for this okay homer plessy died not seeing the fruits of his activism right he didn't see the results okay but after he died things moved moved forward in a better direction okay so if you are an activist and you think like you're just shouting into the void and nothing is changing you might be wrong the, the results, the accumulated benefits from the results of all your all the activism that you're doing and everybody else is doing, might the society might see the benefits from that years after you're dead. Okay, so maybe like this is a good reminder of that. So I don't see it as useless. I think this is very good. I, I think it should be. Do, do we do need to use these moments to reflect sometimes? Yeah. It what certainly you... meant a lot to his descendants. Like there were descendants at the pardoning ceremony and they there were like basically go. in tears because they it was like um, so significant for them for that to be acknowledged. And it felt like a turning, it, like it um, spoke to them so deeply about where we are as a nation. You know, we yeah. have a lot that we can improve on. But moments yes. like this recognize how far we've come. Yes, exactly. Hey guys, if you're a fan of Blasphemy and Sexy Cali, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest Blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today and we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week so make sure to subscribe link in the description below